Welcome back to A Plus Parents, everyone. And with me today, are you ready? I got a, a an author, an author of four books. And not only do I have the author with us today, but I also have the illustrator of the book. So I want to introduce you to this just delightful, delightful, delightful couple, <laughs> uh, Michael and Sarah Dowling. So super excited to, to have you all here. We actually met in the uh, Florida Parent Association, uh, Education Association, the FPEA convention back in Orlando uh, earlier this year. And uh, we got to talk a little bit and just find out what they were up to. And uh, Michael was kind enough to give me a copy of his book. So I really, really appreciate that. And uh, he's the author of four books. So, um, and I will tell you, Michael is 83 years old and his wife, Sarah, is 80 years old. So just, uh, you know, it, it's always great when we can, you know, when we get a chance to to be with people that have life experience and that have had the time to kind of see the world and especially, you know, you know, think about you know, what's evolved in the, the last 80 years that we've been here and, and uh, you know, just uh, technology and all the different things that have happened and, and so many different conversations out there in the world today of, you know, of how people are being guided in the world. And so Michael has a really, really, uh, just a, a really great perspective on how to keep things being brought back to what is it? Like, what's God's purpose for us and what that looks like? So uh, one of his books is, uh, it, it's called Frog's Rainy Day. And it is a book of fables that he created. Uh, he told me that it's getting ready to be translated into uh, Portuguese and it's been, uh, it's published, it's out. And uh, it's also um, World Magazine named it one of the most, uh, one of the six most outstanding Christian picture books of the 21st century. So that's super cool. And he has his adorable wife with him, Sarah, who is a, an accomplished painter uh, graduated from the University of uh, Massachusetts College of Art in Boston and uh, has had an opportunity to work with uh, with renowned painters, has been featured in, uh, you know, in uh, galleries and shows. And so she gets to illustrate all of Michael's work. So just super, super cool. Um, this, you guys, first of all, thank you for making your day work to be here. And uh, anything else you want to add to that, just about who you are and what's well, up? Thank you, Dennis. You know, you mentioned... Uh, we're 83 years old and we've seen a lot and gone through a lot. When I was growing up, I went to public school in elementary school. We used to sing Ferris Lord Jesus in the in the auditorium so much that I got tired of it, you know, and I wish that we'd be able to say that today. And uh, that was before TV, a little bit before TV and so on that we were. So it's been a lot of changes now, a lot of changes. And so, uh, yeah, I wrote this book. Uh, this is a copy of it here, the front cover, Frogs Rainy Day Story and Other Fables, because in my, well, I went to church every Sunday when I was young. Uh, Sarah did too when she was growing up. It was a thing to do and a sort of, a, very much of a cultural thing. And I'm sure we heard God's word some of the time, but it didn't sink in and it wasn't in our home. And when I got older, I, I went pretty far astray, went to an astrologer that led me into uh, Silva Mind Control, Occult, and Earhart Seminars training called EST, and different things like that that are positive thinking and some of the occult influence in there and that kind of thing. So I got went pretty far astray, and God rescued me when I was in my 30s. And that's when uh, Sarah has a similar story that God rescued her in her 30s, and we got married. And that's why I wrote this book, because the culture has gone gone so far toward what I would call new age thinking, Eastern religions, which has in and that kind of stuff that I wanted to write this book of nine fables that teach a biblical worldview. And the next generation really needs to hear that today, especially. Wow. So, you know, who is your uh, your target audience? Like, who did you write the book for? You know, I started writing it for adults because I thought, you know, I really wanted to, the issues are pretty deep. You know, the culture says truth is within you. So you discover it by looking inside yourself. All paths lead to God. If you think Jesus is the only way, you're narrow minded and intolerant. And there's nothing worse than being intolerant. Uh, happiness is the goal of life. All those kind of things. And I thought those issues, I wanted to hit at those issues in my fables and I thought it needed to be a book for adults. And because of Sarah's illustrations and focus groups, I believe God guided it to be a children's book. 
And I call it an apologetics book for adults disguised as a children's book. So the target audience, I would say, is picture books are for five and up. But really, the uh, sweet spot of the book is probably eight and eight to 15 or 16, something like that. And adults use it in Bible studies and college students. College students are being bombarded by this. And if they don't know what they believe, then they don't know what the culture is saying and how it lines up with scripture or doesn't and what what they believe, then they can get led astray. It's very dangerous out there. Mm. Wow. Do you have, uh, Michael, in, you know, as you were creating the fables, right? Do you have a favorite one? Like one really you felt like that's the one that really is the one that really speaks to you or that that is the story to share. It's all going to be your favorite, right? But do you have one that really stands out for you? Um, well, uh, I mean, are you going to ask me to read one or something or what are you no, going to No, no, I'm just, just, you know, just because people I, as they're going to take I a look really, at the book I and really tell, like, don't. it's always good to I mean, know I, the author's favorite stuff, right? It's like, what right. you really, that would really inspires you, right? Well, I think when I was writing the, a lot of people like the first fable, Frog's Rainy Day Story, the best, that's the first one. And I love the moral. I remember when I thought of the moral. And I just felt like the Lord was there, you know, I mean, it's just like the, I think he made me to create. That's one of the things. And so I just felt like in the, and the, the story is about letters. It's a rainy day and frog wants to write a story. He, it's too rainy to go out, even for a frog to go out to play. So he writes a story and the letters aren't cooperating. They start walking off the page and <laughs> He said, I'm using you to write a story. And the letters say, we're sick and tired of being used. To you, you're just tools you boss around. Make this word, make that word. And so they want to be rich and famous and do their own thing, which is so worldly. And uh, Frog says, well, look, uh, what are you going to do? And they didn't have an answer, you know. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll write a story about you if you stay. And it'll, I'll say how you wanted to be important, but then you realized you are important when you're doing what you're created to do. And the letter stayed on the page. And that's why you can read the story. They're still there. And uh, Frog wrote the story. And the moral is we're made for a much larger story, which we miss when we seek our own glory. And, you know, it's just so powerful. I almost cry when I read it, you know. And so, but some of the other fables really hit at the issues very well, too, about uh, some of the issues in the culture. So I don't actually have a favorite. I got you. Well, I you, I have one now. I just just hearing that it's already my favorite one. I haven't seen oh, the other right. ones yet, right? So I gotta have to get back Thank and you. check it all out. So you know, in creating this, right? And you have and and I love that you you know you can see it's a it's a book for young people, but it's actually a book for adults disguised as a children's book, right? Which right. you know because it it lets us get back to our own inner child, you know, because it reminds us of who we are and reminds us of why we're here and it reminds us of God's plan and reminds us of those things, right? When you are seeing that young people are reading this and parents are reading it, so you've got adults and young people, if you, you know, in creating it, right, what is it like your hope that the book is able to accomplish? Uh, you know, it's interesting. We're selling the book. It shows, and we, you know, at the Florida Parent Education Association convention and so on and we have a booth and, and people sometimes come up to us and just hug us and say thank you for creating this book I bought it from your last year and our kids love it and they see a need for it in the culture uh, I would hope that by reading the fables people it makes people more alert to what the culture is saying and the unbiblical things that it's saying and then more alert to what scripture says about those things and they, they have we have quotations in the book and uh, there are quotations at the end of each fable. Some of them are from uh, the culture. Like here's some right here on this fable. Uh, the culture says, and then uh, God's word says. And so you can contrast those with each other. And, it, and so it teaches uh, people what God's word is and why the culture is so off whack, out of whack with that these days. So it prepares people. So young people are going out into the world. And I talked to a fellow the other day in our church. His son is at a major college. If he talks about his faith in certain ways and a culture in certain ways, he'll get graded down by the professor. So he's mm -hmm. learned, you know, just to share privately or something. It's really a pretty hostile world out there. 
homeschoolers are very alert to this. I mean, we're very impressed with with the homeschool people that they are. They know when you say the culture's out of whack, they nod their heads. Yeah. They know it is. And so, of all the groups of people that we've seen, homeschoolers are some of the most alert to what's going on, and this helps them educate it. It's something that. Uh, parents can use at the dinner table and just talk about it and talk about the discussion or in a devotional in the evening or whatever. Well, in the back of the book, you should talk about in the back of the book, there are frogs questions for discussion. Yeah, there's discussion so, oh, questions. Okay. There's several discussion questions for each fable at the back of the book. Uh, there, there's pages of discussion questions. So it's about six or seven for each fable. And I've just completed a guide for discussion leaders by popular demand. So it's going up on our website soon so that a parent or whatever can read that. And that gives you some ideas of how to lead through the discussion. And then also on the website for download are more discussion questions. There's a whole set for young kids and uh, for children, I called it. And, and it then has another activities set too. That with activities, yeah. uh huh. Mm -hmm. Great. Faces and games and things. That's a free download. And then there's another set for adults and teens. And those are free downloads. So we really, it's a teaching tool. It's yeah. Not the one for adults and teens is really an apologetics. It's, you know, it's, it's your deep dive. Yeah. You know, uh, things like Nietzsche said, uh, I, I, I can't believe in a God who always wants to be praised, wants to be praised all the time. That's a deep statement, you know. Let's unpack that and talk about that. Right. So, those kind of things. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Sarah, you are, you know, you are illustrating the books and, and working with Michael. What what's that like for you? Um, you know, what what do you you know what yeah, it's just kind of like just finding your own self-expression and your own joy and being able to work with Michael in that way. What's it like when you're creating the, the images and illustrations that go along with the books? Well, I, I just think uh, Michael's very funny and, and he's taking what I think are very important issues, but Michael's gift is his humor and then he'll jerk you somehow uh, into looking at it slightly different, differently. And um I don't know, just uh, for instance, Duck and Beaver, when he said, well, beavers have soft voices. I mean, that's just Michael. I mean, how does he know what kind of voice beaver has? Right. And beaver took me a long time. I figured if I could get beaver, I could get I could get all the animals. For some reason, beaver seemed important. I had about 50 beavers that were laying around my studio. And, uh, and it's interesting how much the Lord oversees or oversees this. Um, because I went into, we were in Charleston at the time, and I went into the arts and crafts store there. And a guy came up to me, a chubby fellow. I'd never seen him before and never seen him since. And he said, have you seen that? And nobody ever usually would speak to me. But he said, have you seen this new product? And I said, no. And he said, well, come look at this. And it was a chunk of watercolor and charcoal in a block. And he said, this is a new product. You might like it. And I bought four of them and I took them home and I applied that to Beaver. And all of a sudden to me, Beaver came alive. Mm. And I almost feel like that was just a Lord's gift because um, it gave some uh, quality to the, instead of just being watercolor, the charcoal added a dimension. So, so anyway, it's, it's been an interesting ride, but I, I, uh, Michael can always make me laugh. And that's why the characters, probably have a slight edge to them. Um, they're not your typical cute animal. I mean, some people might think they're cute, but they also have got char their characters. Wow. That's like, awesome. Well, and how great for 50 years that you have been together and been married. Uh, I mean, I'm, I would say it's right around 50, right? 44. That, 44. That's amazing. And that he still makes you laugh. I just want to tell you, I love that. That's that's really really awesome. Yeah, he's 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 very funny. He's got a wonderful humor. Oh, uh, that's great. Well, I can already hear just that you know, in letters leaving the page and saying we're on strike, we're done, we're out, right? You know, we yeah, use, yeah. I love just the idea of that, right? To really, and then how do you bring that back together? 
to because you were called to do what it was you were called to do. And if your letter's right. on a page, your letter's on a page, right? So it's just, it's just, just even I, you've already got me with the first, the first fable. Um, so, you know, do you also have, you guys have created a website called um, creatorsforchrist.us. Um, you know, I really, um, as you, yeah, I'm, I'm 60, 60 years old, you know, and I, I keep looking at what does it look like as, you know, as I move into my, uh, my senior years, right, and I'm into my, you know, my, my more adult life, but when you look to see where you are, and seeing that you've reached the age of 80, and beyond 80, and you're still creating, and you're still, you're still giving back, and you're still making a difference, what do you hope to accomplish by creating the site creatorsforchrist.us? What, what is it that you want to see in your, your own remaining years? Well, you know, we can't quit because we have no savings, no retirement or anything. We've you know, <laughs> okay. invested everything. So we're really living by faith. Gotcha. And, uh, and God's blessed us with good health and so on. We've got energy. So we're thankful for that. So I don't think we'd want it any other way. I don't think if, you know, if. Uh, and so what would we like to see? Well, uh sarah i would love to see sarah be able to do more of her painting and she would too and have time and maybe we'll switch a bit from illustrations to her fine art and i'd love to see that and we're working on another well two other books right now 32 page children's books more traditional thing one would be i think for the general market it wouldn't be overtly christian and the other might be for the christian market but it's a story you know different stories and then we've got some other books. Uh, I'm, I, well, I'm thinking about something that would be, I don't know if I can do it or not. We'll have to see. It'd be scary. But you know how The Emperor's New Clothes, Hans, Hans Christian Andersen, that kind of story. I'd like to do some stories like that, you know, maybe just three or four that really point people to Christ in some way or to God specifically. And Sarah has an idea for a book of... Uh, that you want to do this yes i love the section from joe which is does a rain have a father you know did you create the storehouses you know and mm -hmm. so i would do a series of paintings i think that that would um hopefully again point people to look at god's creation as an example of how much he loves us how he cares for us i also want to add i think because we come out of such darkness we're just so aware of the culture and the need to the need to use whatever gifts we have to sort of proclaim that Christ is your only hope. Hmm. Um, I think wow. we both feel very strongly about that. I remember when I first came to the Lord, I just prayed that I'd be on the front edge, that I'd be on the cutting edge. Um, and so somehow we always have been. Yeah, I totally can hear that. And here you are. And and not to the place where it's like time to now put your sword down it's like no we're still going so are they well, a paintbrush or a pen right you got them both so <laughs> Moses and Abraham and yeah. we're in good company right. they even get going till their 80s right wow. yeah I I saw a study uh and the study was that yeah as as uh as adults move into their 60s and 70s and into their 80s it is their time of life where they are the most productive uh the they make the biggest contributions to, um, you know, to the world at large. And you're, you're both demonstrating that and living that. So it's just, uh, it's really, really great. Well, that's awesome. Um, tell me uh, this. So if people want to get the book, uh, Michael, is there the site? Is it, um, is it, is it frogs rainy day story.com? Is that, is that that's the site? correct? That's, okay. that's, that, that we have our own website. You can get it on other bookstores and so right. on online and regular and that's fine but our website is frogsrainydaystory.com and uh when they buy it from us we can autograph the book so we can personalize it oh. too with the child's Isn't name on great? it yeah. okay oh Should my god that's, yeah that's awesome oh very cool well, good. And we'll have the website up in the show notes so people can find it. And uh, if they happen to be watching this on YouTube, if they don't uh, have it in the show notes, it's frogs with an S, rainy uh, daystory.com. So frogs rainy daystory.com. And you can find out more about Michael and Sarah uh, and what they're up to. And they're in their, uh, the site they have called creatorsforchrist.us. So you can find out more about their own mission and what they're up to and the legacy really that they're leaving for us to, uh, you know, to see what it is to leave 
to live a very, very fulfilled life and get to find out how funny Michael really is. So that's awesome, right? <laughs> oh, that's really great. Very, very good. Well, uh, first of all, you guys, I want to tell you, you know, thank you for uh, making your day work to be here and uh, organizing your time and really just sharing and sharing about, you know, who you are, what you've seen in your life and what you're up to and the things to come. I just uh, really, really, really admire that. So it's been great. Uh, you're very kind. You're fun. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, we, and we'll uh, we'll check in. If you guys have new things coming on, let me know. We'll come back and do this again and let people know new things that you have coming out and what you're up to. And uh, yeah, we'll get back together and have a chance to do this again. Thanks so, so much. Okay. Good. Yeah, great. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for tuning in to A Plus Parents today. Uh, as always, it's great to have you join us and, and tune in and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs>